Okay, so, okay. so hindi siya talaga sinadya na yun talaga yung gusto mo ibenta? Yeah, I, I wanted to be in sale. I, I tried a lot. I went into insurance, real estate. Mm -hmm. I went into a lot. Since my husband then was working with PNOC, mm -hmm. I had a sideline of, of buying some yung LPG mm -hmm. and then sell it. <laughs> I, was, I was a jack of all trades, master of none. But since books, favorite ko talaga yan. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. So that's where I concentrate. And now you, now you are one of the one of the largest or biggest or the oldest. Um, I don't say that. Probably I'm um, um, a book distributor, catering in, to the needs of all. Shall we call from infants up to professionals? Okay, so let's talk about your materials. You are importing books. These yes. are uh, imported books. Yes, from, from UK, from US, from from Singapore, yeah. wherever I find books that are reasonable. Uh, materials that are used in, in, in teaching, in learning, more so with the parents because prior knowledge is very important and it starts in the house. What do we need in our Philippine education now? What we need in our Philippine education is for the students to be engaged, to, for the students to be, you know this comprehension thing? Mm -hmm. The children now are into memorization because of a lot of information. I, I was part of that generation. I think you were too, right? Uh, we were I don't think to, so. I don't, no? don't, I don't see because no, because we were concentrated, because of the event of high technology, the mm -hmm. computer and everything. During my time, uh, it's not yet a fad. Right. It's not yet a fad. So that's why we were concentrated on learning. We were concentrated on reading. But at this point in time, children don't read anymore. Yeah, because when I was younger, probably our second guest is still young. Uh, she's also into memorizing things. Yes, you know the As problem. instructed by the. You know the problem of memorizing. You don't know how to analyze anymore. More so that in the school they feed them with a lot of information, mm -hmm. and then when they go home, there is this computer that when they open the internet, mm -hmm. there are a lot of informations that they can they can they can read, and then at the end of the day they don't know how to process it anymore. Right. So that when you're going to ask them to defend a certain case studies or a certain question, mm -hmm. they don't know how to answer it. So who, who is to blame if there is anyone? Um, I blame probably now the system of educational system. The of system ours. and the people who created, <laughs> who created the system. It's not that it's <laughs> our educational system is bad, but it's just but that... It's flawed. Can you put it that way? It's flawed. Probably yes, mm -hmm. yes. Because the teachers now nowadays sometimes they don't want to get out from their comfort zones. But there are a lot of schools, though, the big ones who would uh, send the, the, the teachers for training abroad. Right, right. But you know, it's too expensive. It is, it is. It's too expensive. You cannot afford to send all your teachers yes. abroad. You know what I do? One of the advocacies of my company is literacy. Mm -hmm. And every time I go abroad, because I do attend Frankfurt Book Fairs, uh, London Book Fairs, US Book Fairs, wherever there are book fairs showcasing all the materials, for education, I attend. Right. And from there, I, I, I look for materials which I can bring home Right. For the, for the teachers to use, for the parents to use. Okay, so let's review the process. The process now is I am a teacher, I am going to the class, and I teach 45 minutes per subject. Yes. So I, I, I write things down, I base my, my lessons on the lesson plan that I did, yes. twice, I, I was required to do, yes. and then I teach, I, uh, I ask, uh, uh, my my students to, to recite. recite. I give them quizzes, and then oh you failed, oh you pass, and then after the, the the one year academic period, here are the top ten, and then the the list of forty. Yes. <laughs> 40. So that's the existing system. What is the solution that you are bringing to the table? Actually, I'm very very much um, I'm happy that way back 2007 during the. And under former Jesse Lapos, the Secretary of Education, we have this program which has been there since 1998. Mm -hmm. It's called Understanding by Design. Understanding by, by design. design, ladies and gentlemen. Understanding by design. design. This is a curriculum design wherein no child is left behind. Every child is being attended to. Okay, I highlight natin yan. Hindi na iwan yung mga hindi, yung mga batang hindi natuto, hindi sila na iwan. Yes. Kumbaga parang hindi sila alis hangga't hindi natuto. Yes, exactly. That's, how, that's, that's that's the definition of understanding. Yes, design. how does it go? It's it's a backward design. Mm -hmm. Why backward design? Because the traditional uh, curriculum design that we have is if this is my lesson plan, I have to uh, uh, schedule it 
for example, for one sem. You finish it. You finish it. And then you have to finish right. it. Whatever happens. It's called the curriculum base. They have to finish it. And they just have to, uh, to do the talking for sometimes for 45, 30 minutes. In other words, just to satisfy uh, what is in there. Exactly. Okay. So, wala kang pakialam kung may matutuo. Hindi naman sila wala kang pakialam. Meron silang pakialam. But that is how they were taught. Right. Okay. That's okay. how they were taught. That's why a lot of parents now are getting enhancement programs. Mm -hmm. So, what do we need to do? Oh, you know, okay, what do so what, what, what's that? This actually is nowadays it's a backward design because they do the, the assessment at the end. That's why now when, when I talked with you mm -hmm. two days ago, mm -hmm. I said, "Bahala ka kung maintindihan mo if you cannot if you cannot understand the good pasang awa and then you, you bring the child to grade two. Mm -hmm. In this curriculum design, which is understanding by design, you have to assess the child first. That's why it's a backward design. You 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 post assessment mo, you bring it. Ahead. So, you have to take the bata. No, you assess. You okay. assess the child whether the child has a knowledge of your lesson. Okay. And in so doing, you must have now to adjust your lesson plan on the assessment that you've done for the slow learner, for the average learner, and for the advanced so, learner. Therefore, your teaching method should not be one size fits all. No, no such thing as one size fits all. Okay. That's the traditional thing that we had before. We call, I call the curriculum based. Okay. When we come back, just for a very short com commercial, when we come back, I'll be, I'll be asking you uh, what happened with the curriculum, what, what happened with that design that we're talking okay. about. And when we come back also from the center stage nine years ago, the Bini Bining Filipinas pageant, he's now into business. She's here in the studio. It's getting hard in the studio, ladies and gentlemen. There is a binibining Pilipinas universe way back in 2002. And now a certified business, etiquette, and international protocol, and image consultant, a dynamic speaker, and corporate trainer. How, how, how did she come up with these kinds of things? She has trained celebrities, uh, myself not yet included, managers, beauty queens, and public officials on their appearance, behavior, and communication. Ladies and gentlemen, if this rings a bell, so be it. Karen Austria, the Director of Global Image Management. Hi, Karen. Hello. Welcome good morning. To, welcome to the show. Oh, thank you so much for inviting wow. me. It's, a, it's an honor to be here in creative yeah. business. Thank yeah. you, Lloyd. I don't know if you have an idea that uh, you're pregnant. 